All right, so let's talk about one of the most elegant solutions in distributed systems, uh, the Gossip Protocol. It's surprisingly simple, incredibly robust, and you'll basically find it everywhere from uh, databases to blockchain networks. Uh, so in distributed systems, we often need hundreds of servers to share state. Uh, a traditional approach is to use a central server, uh, but that creates a single point of failure. Uh, the gossip protocol actually solves this quite, I would say, elegantly. Uh, you... With the gossip protocol, you have uh, servers exchanging information peer to peer, and it's just like how uh, rumors spread between people. Each server uh, periodically picks few random neighbors and shares what he knows with those neighbors. Uh, because information flows through multiple paths, there's no single point of failure. Um, even if several servers crash, uh, the rest just keep gossiping and eventually everyone stays in sync. Now, uh, here's the beautiful part. Uh, propagation is logarithmic. And to put that uh, in concrete terms, right? let's think about a cluster of 100 servers each contacting three neighbors. Uh, the information that they're sharing reaches everyone in just four rounds. Uh, that's, uh, that's the power of exponential spreading. Each server maintains its own version number. Now, there can be more information besides the version number, but for the sake of explaining how the protocol works, it's uh, sufficient to just say that the, inf the information that they are sharing is just the version number. Um, so a server has its own version number, uh, which it can bump on updates. Uh, plus, it also has a cache uh, that holds every other server's version. If a server restarts, it loses its cache, as one would imagine, uh, but it keeps its own version. And it's uh, through the gossip uh, that it, it's able to quickly rebuild uh, the information that it lost. Uh, we can think about the gossip protocol using uh, a, th a, a tool like uh, uh, TLA plus, which is a, uh, a state machine specification uh, language. And we can do so uh, by first setting up uh, our constants and variables. So let's say we have a server, I mean, a, a cluster of servers, right? Uh, and each of those uh, servers has uh, a version number. And so as a variable, as a state variable, we can have a set or, you know, a map of version numbers. For the sake of uh, uh, the modeling or the simulation of the system, we are going to say that we are only interested uh, in going up to version 3, right? Now, for the initialization, right, we basically set the version number of every server to zero when we start. An action of the state machine or the protocol is to gossip. And what's really happening is that you, uh, you have two servers that exchange information and that exchange uh, results in both of them having the most up-to-date version information uh, about all the other, I mean, all servers in the cluster. 
Now, there's also the bump action, which really means that uh, each server, uh, you know, is capable of bumping its own version number uh, up to the max version, of course. And uh, it only, up well, yes, it, it basically it only updates its own version and leaves the version of every other server. Uh, I guess the uh, the cache uh that it has on hand it leaves that in place and just you know updates its own version um one way to simulate the fact that you know as part of the protocol there is a consideration for the fact that a server can crash and one way to emulate that is by having a restart action which essentially uh clears out for each server or for a given server uh, that we are restarting, we clear the cache, which again is the version information about every every other node in the cluster except itself, right? And uh, so we zero that out and we essentially just keep our own information. So again, thinking in terms of a state machine, we define the next uh, function handler. Well, I don't know if that's the right uh, name to use, but essentially the, the step function of the state machine, we define that uh, through the actions that we just talked about. So at each step, right, either we have a server that bumps its own version or we enable two servers to uh, gossip between each other or we simulate uh, a server crash again thinking in terms of a state machine uh, we have the safety and liveness properties uh, for the safety one uh, we want to uh, know that uh, the version number is never an invalid value, right? It's at least uh, zero, and but it's never greater than the expected max version. I think that's a fairly simple safety property uh, to come up with. And then you have the liveness property, right? And the idea here is that we we want to make sure that through this protocol, right, through this peer-to-peer -peer exchange of information, eventually every server uh, have a shared understanding of the world. And that we can verify this by saying that eventually we, if you pick any two servers, uh, they both uh, have... Uh, uh, have reached the max version, right? But not only that, but they also uh, are aware of each other's version, right? So not only does each one of them reaches the max version, but each one of them is also aware that the other one has reached the max uh, the max version. Excuse me. So again, it's it's about ensuring that eventually. Uh, all the servers in the cluster uh, have a shared uh, uh, and uh, consistent view of the of the world, and this is a snippet of how you would uh, bring everything together to define the full specification, which would then be run by the model checker. And so, yeah, the spec defines uh, the initial state, all possible transitions, and uh, the fairness conditions for liveness. And so the model checker exhaustively verifies safety and liveness across all possible executions. And this is a good example that shows uh, the fact that uh, you can use a tool like TLA plus to really think about the states of your system. Uh, it helps you understand complex protocols by modeling them as state machines. 
um, it helps you again think about the what rather than the how and which can really help you find sort of bugs that typical testing will miss and uh, it definitely helps you build confidence in your design before you start uh, implementing uh, the the code and yeah i think uh, that's all that i had in mind uh, in terms of talking about the gossip protocol again it's a I would say it's a, it's a rather simple, but yet very useful protocol, distributed systems protocol. Um, and using a tool like TLA Plus uh, can really help you uh, understand the way a protocol works. If this was uh, interesting or useful and uh, just uh, helps you find uh i guess helps you build an interest in uh formal specifications or formal verification in general uh please do like and subscribe and uh, i'll see you in the next one